Okay, so here we are, day three in the workshop. Today we're going to be covering two other sections of our folder. Again, basically, what we've been doing, I've been giving you the little parts to put into your folder here, right? So you have your um, your morning statements will be in the beginning. And then after that, affirmations, after that, the areas of your life. And then after that, we start getting into each area in detail. So we've already gone through the health part yesterday. Um, I know it was a lot of information for health. I just wanted to give you guys some tips to maybe assist you with your energy, assist you with your overall uh, the overall quality of health and hopefully improve a couple of things for yourself because, hey, like I said, it's probably one of the most important areas of your life. If you don't have your health, you really don't have anything, you know, and it's not fun when, when you get a diagnosis of some type of illness or disease because it's really, it really kind of destroys your morale. Uh, you even feel a little shamed about it, but just from my experience, hey, all of it is reversible. You can cure anything. I've heard people have cured themselves from AIDS, from cancer, from all this stuff that they say it's uncurable, right? Um, it's uncurable using the modern medicine, but it's curable using natural means, at least from, from my understanding. But these two areas for today, we're going to be covering your personality, your character, uh, and relationships. So what's your, when it comes up to your personality and character, this, this is more to do with you. This is who you are, you know? Who do you want to be as a person? What qualities and traits do you really want to possess? And then on top of that, how can you change yourself, right? How can you change who you are, how you think of yourself, how you act, how you think, how you treat others? And I'm going to cover how we do that here. So I'm going to go ahead and um, start sharing my screen. Screen to share... So here we are. So we're going to just start with the, the, the blank worksheet here. Uh, that gives you the instructions of what, what to do in this in this part, okay? So my personality slash character. Here you will be clarifying who you choose to become. The self is not something that is innate, nor is it concrete. You were born in your specific biological gender, skin color, and so on. But the person you are is something you can mold yourself into. Now let's let's get you aligned with the qualities you want to possess in your personality and in your character. What personality traits and character traits do you want to possess? Now, here's a question. Who do I desire to be? Focus my thoughts on the person I desire to be. I am statements. Make a list of I am statements below and claim these qualities you desire to possess. So I'm going to go right into my um, the I am statements that I've created for myself. So these are the I am statements that I kind of want to share with you. You can pick and choose if you want to use some of these. If you want to add a couple of these for your for yours, go for it. Copy and paste. I don't care. Do it, bro. These are I am statements. This is you claiming who you want to be. This is this is I've worked on this list for a while. I keep on adding adding more to this thing because I'm just getting longer and longer. Um, you'd, you'd be amazed how many words we have in the English language. <laughs> there are time, but I'm going to go ahead and read them out. Now, this is what you do, right? This is one of the things I actually read daily. You know, I, I instead of having it in my folder in the back, and I'll, I'll show you how I structure the folder for things that I want to do daily because I put everything to the front that I want to do on a daily basis and everything else I kind of like review throughout the week. Right. But this is if you really want to take control of your, the qualities that you possess as a person uh, with your personality, with your character and everything, these I am statements will assist you with that. OK. So when you start reading these I am statements, you're claiming this within yourself. You're claiming this, even though some of this may not even be true. You know, maybe you're not a, you're not very confident at the moment. But you want to build that confidence as you claim the confidence within you. You want to feel what it feels to be confident. We all know how it feels to be confident. But what you're claiming, what you're trying to claim here is you want to be confident all the time, right? Because I'm sure there's th things in your life that you feel very confident doing. So the emotion of confidence is something that's familiar to every single one of us. It isn't a foreign emotion. But okay, I'll start with this. I am a contributor. I add more value to people's lives than others do. 
I want to contribute. I know that I want to contribute and I want to claim that within myself. You know, I don't want to be the type of person who's always just taking, 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 taking from others and never contributing, contributing, contributing to my community, to my marriage, to, to my, to my clients, to my, to my team, to my business. I'm a contributor. So it's one of the first things that I really want to claim within myself. I am strong in personality and I'm confident. I am passionate and I'm compassionate. I radiate love and joyfulness. I'm spiritual, a fraction of God's infinite energy, and I'm grateful. I'm generous and I'm and giving. I give of my wealth and of my time. I'm happy. I'm joyful, silly, goofy, funny, hilarious, humorous, and I'm charming. I'm focused and concentrated. I'm curious and interested. I am motivated and inspired. I'm excited and, and enthusiastic. I am determined. I'm committed. I'm persistent. I'm consistent. I'm adaptable and I'm flexible, right? I am caring and loving. I'm a passionate and amazing husband and the best father. I'm intelligent and wise. I'm genius and brilliant. I'm enlightened and transcendent. I'm composed and graceful. I'm absolutely blessed. I'm fearless and courageous. I act despite the fear. I'm talented, gifted, and incredible. I'm loyal, honest, and I have integrity. I'm healthy, powerful, and full of explosive energy. I'm a teacher. I'm a student. I'm a leader and a coach. I'm, a, I'm an awesome, amazing person who people are drawn to, love, and respect. I'm always presentable and respectful. I'm immersed and obsessed with my dreams. I love to grow. I love to learn. I'm committed to always learning and growing. I possess these qualities and I live by these qualities now. I claim this. I claim who I want to be. I do it in the, with the I am statements. These I am statements are very powerful. Some of the most powerful. They said the two most powerful words in our language is I am. I am. Because you're claiming who you are. You claim what you are. And so if you say, I am stupid, you're claiming that, right? Oh, I'm, I am, uh, you know, I'm always dumb. Or I always make mistakes. I, or I, if you start claiming all these negative things, then that's what you start claiming within yourself. And don't be surprised if you're, if you're stupid all the time, right? If you claim that within yourself, because that's what you're claiming. So I suggest, pay hey, pay attention to the words you say. The words we say are very powerful. Um, this is something I learned not too long ago, but to spell or spelling, to spell or cast casting spells. St spell casting requires words in order to cast a spell. All the words we speak are casting spells, okay? We're not bruja, bru brujas or witches or wizards or any of that stuff, but understand that the language we speak is casting and creating things around us. And it's in the language to spell, casting spells. Do you think there's a it's just a coincidence? It's not a coincidence. This is this is reality. Okay. There's a lot of things that seem coincidental, but they're really not coincidental. This is how things work. When God created the universe, God spoke the universe into existence. Those the sounds and vibrations are real things. And it's there's energy being put out from the words that I speak. Right. And as I speak to you, the reason you can hear me is because as the, my my voice travels along the 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 medium of the air, there's vibrations of these molecules in the air that are vibrating and there's energy there. OK, these energies have frequencies and these these energies, which is the same thing as 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 energy can be basically transmuted across different different forms, meaning that energy can create form. God spoke the universe into existence and it created the earth. It created the universe. It created everything, right? Physically speaking, this is, we have that same power. Okay. That's why you want to be very careful with the words you speak, especially when you're talking about yourself, especially when you're talking about like your, your spouse or your children, don't say negative things about them because as you speak these words, you're casting them and you're creating these, this into reality. So you want to say positive things about your spouse and your children to create that into your reality, right? Even though you think it's true that they're, you know, dumb or whatever you want to call them, right? Um, but you have to really, pay, you have to be very careful with the words you speak. And so this is, I created these I am statements. A lot of these are mine. Some of these are some I am statements that I've, I came across. I really liked, but I'm finding words that are very powerful for me that I really want to 
that I really want to, to have within my own personality and possess within my personality, okay? This is the person I want to be. And I strive to become this person and I need to I need to clarify this every single day. And as I repeat it every day, every day, every day, what do I do? Subconsciously, I'm programming myself to become this person, right? And then all of a sudden, automatically, I'm living by these qualities. I'm living by these traits. You know, this is a person I am. You know, and I can see it. I can see it in my the way my actions. I can see it the way in, in the words that I speak, how I feel, what I do, <clears throat> how I interact with other people. So, create some very powerful I am statements. If you want to use some of these, absolutely go for it. Use them. Okay. Now, the next section here. Remember, we talked about how how to set goals. So what is it that you want? Cool. I want to possess all these qualities. Now, the next section is why do I want to possess all these qualities, right? Why do I want to have these personality and character traits? And you want to state it here, right? You really want to, I want to be this person because, and so let's let's see what I've written. Um, okay, so I desire the possession of these qualities because by being this type of man, I can accomplish all that I purely desire. I can overcome all obstacles. I can be consistent with my focus and actions towards my goals. I desire to be this man because I can then inspire others to grow and be more than what they have limited themselves to be. I desire to be a great coach, teacher, and father to my son, and I can do this as this man. I desire to be a great, loving, supportive husband to my wife, and I can do this as this man. I desire to connect with people with I connect I desire to connect with and help many people and I can do this as this man. I desire to always be loving and caring and sincere to all people and all things and this man is who lives this way always. As this man I am capable of creating my life as I desire and have the energy and confidence to manifest my goals. So this is the reason why I need, I need to possess these qualities because then as this man, I can do these things. I can be a better husband, a better father, a better coach, a better business owner, a better a better person overall. I can help people, right? And so this, this person with these qualities can do that and that inspires me. This inspires, I want me becoming this man because I can create these results in my life inspires me and I need to, I need to clarify that here. And I do clarify it here for myself as clearly as I possibly can. So we have, the next part is, what actions can I take? Set a list of actions and schedule them for daily or weekly to-dos. Set a time limit for these actions. What actions can I take to assist me in becoming this person, right? And so a couple of actions that I, I set here is review these qualities daily, two minutes per day. For, for me to read these I am statements here, it, it takes me maybe maybe a minute and a half, maybe two minutes. So it's not a very long time, right? We have the time to review these things. If you want to review it multiple times a day, say when you wake up and then maybe before you go to sleep, go for it, do it, right? But at the very least, I review these qualities daily, two minutes per day, done, right? So live by these qualities daily. It's not really something I have to put like a time limit to, but I really want to do my best. If like, if I don't feel confident, like I have to catch myself like, no, I, I'm a conf I'm confident, I'm confident, I'm confident, I'm strong in personality. I can overcome whatever challenges are, are, in, are in front of me. So I want to live by these qualities daily. Daily, I need to claim this. Daily, I want to live by these qualities. I want to be, I want to be funny. I want to be, I want to be charming. I want to be strong, confident. I want to be, um, I want to be a contributor, right? I want to be a good husband, a good father. Uh, always live by love. You know, when it comes down to it, there's two energies in this world. You have the positive and the negative energy, or you have emotions that are, that are rooted to love and you have emotions that are rooted to fear. Fear is more of a destructive emotion. Love is a, is a more of a, a create, a creative emotion, emotion that creates and supports and helps with the, with development. And so to live by love or by loving emotions, it's, it's, it's a, it's just the best way to live as opposed to living in fear. There are a lot of people who live in fear and it doesn't support them. It doesn't assist them. It doesn't help them. Fear is not a bad emotion. It's, it's a, it helps you when it comes down to identifying things that you need to do in your life to improve the quality of your life or maybe get yourself out of a, a, um, 
a dangerous situation. So fear serves you. But to live in fear always does not serve you, period. But to live in love always, it really does serve you a lot more than, than uh, living always in fear. So I need to pay attention, pay attention to uh, calls to action. Deal with negative emotions. I've, I've talked about this call to action. I'm going to get more uh, in. Uh, I'm going to explain the call to action process more thoroughly on Saturday. But the call to action basically is you dealing with the negative emotions that come about within you. Okay. Um, one thing you need to understand about emotions, especially the negative ones, those negative emotions that may be stimulated within you, maybe by your environment, maybe someone said something and it triggered you. Understand one thing. Understand that it wasn't the person who made you upset. Okay. It wasn't. It wasn't even the words that they said that that caused you to, to make it to make you upset. They just those words just triggered something internally that's already inside of you that then made you upset. So understanding this, it means that all these negative emotions we experience really have nothing to do with the environment. It just has everything to do with what's inside of you already. I, I talked about Wayne Dyer, and he gives this analogy of the limit, right? When you take a lemon and you squeeze the lemon, what comes out of the lemon was already inside the lemon. The lemon juice was already inside of it, and it comes out of it. It doesn't matter if I squeeze it. It doesn't matter if you squeeze it. It doesn't matter if anybody else squeeze it. When co what comes out of the lemon is what's already inside the lemon, the lemon juice. Same thing with people. What comes out of people, it was already inside of them. When people snap and get upset and start, you know, getting angry, that anger was already was already inside of them. It was triggered maybe by the by the environment, but it could have been you or me or anybody else that triggered that. It wouldn't have mattered. That anger was already there and it's coming out. It's being expressed through them because the circumstances in their life are not fitting what they want. And so they they lash out to everybody around them. And this is this is just this is analogous to that. Again, so when you feel these negative emotions, anger, guilt, sadness, loneliness, um, what is it, embarrassed or shameful, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There's so many emotions, right? It, these emotions are already inside of you. So the calls to action, what it does is like, okay, I'm feeling this emotion. What is it exactly? Like, am I angry? Am I irritated? Am I, am I, what am I feeling? Am I, okay, now why am I feeling this emotion? Like, why? Like, it's this self analysis that I've talked about before. And it's a series of questions you're going to be asking yourself to really dig deep to figure out why the hell do I have this emotion in, in turn, internally? Why do I have it in me? Because most of us have, have the misconception thinking that, well, that person made me mad, thinking that that person put that emotion inside of them. No, they didn't. That's not how it works. They just triggered something inside of you. That was it. So what's going on internally? So calls to action help you do this. All right. The call to action helps you deal with these negative emotions so you can figure out what's going on inside of you because most of us are freaking clueless. All right. So pay attention. Pay attention to what you focus on. You have control. Right. You don't control anything in your life other than these three things, your thoughts, your emotions and your actions. That's it. Thoughts, emotions, and actions. And I've talked about this many times. And I'm going to continue to repeat myself because I need you guys to understand it subconsciously and live by this. That's it. You can't control the people. You can't control the weather. You can't control the government. You can't control the economy. You can't control your clients or, your, or any of this stuff. But you can only control your thoughts, your emotions, and your actions. That's it. So pay attention to what you focus on. You have the control. Okay. Because again, if you're not in control, who is in control, <laughs> right? Who's controlling those, your thoughts? Who's controlling your emotions? Who's controlling them? Who's controlling your actions? If it isn't you, it's going to be something else or someone else, right? Or the, something in the environment that's controlling that stuff. Ultimately, it goes down to your subconscious. Yeah, but man, if your subconscious is programmed in a way to not really serve you and empower you, then those subconscious actions are what you're always going to be living by. And you're, they're never really going to serve you and, and empower you and support you in the life that you're trying to create. 
This is why consciously we have to do these things. And it's exhausting in the beginning. It really is. It's it's, it's really difficult. It's not easy. Okay? I, I, I can attest to it. Life is incredibly challenging. But as you get better, you it becomes easier. Now, life doesn't get easier. You just get better. Okay? You get better at controlling your focus, your thoughts, and your emotions. That's what you get better at. And so when you face bigger challenges, you're not you're not freaking out and worrying. You're just like, okay, here we go again. Here's a challenge. Let's go. What do I got to do? And you get yourself focused on finding a solution. And you're excited to face the challenge because you know when you face challenges, you're going to get better at something. You're going to learn a new skill. And on the other side of every challenge, there's always a blessing waiting for you. And if you can overcome challenges consistently, this will just lead you down the path of success because you get, you get better, you get better, and you get better, and you get better. You continuously improve on yourself. More importantly, you get better at controlling your focus, controlling your emotions, and controlling your actions. As, and you, you control it in a way that you want to control it. As opposed to freaking out every time you face a challenge, you get excited, right? What, how, how different is that, right? How it's, I mean, it's the exact opposite. Instead of freaking out, oh my God, what's going to happen? What am I going to do? And like, no, let's go. A challenge? All right, I'm excited. Let's do this. All right, so what is the problem? And so and you start, you're you focused on finding a solution and you're ex the emotions are excitement and you're, you're ready to just take action, take action, take action. This changes everything for you, right? As opposed to, oh my God, here we go again. Here's another challenge. I don't know what to do. I'm freaking out. I'm scared. I'm worried. I don't know if it's going to, we're going to find a solution. And you just... You just stay there in that state of fear, which is very destructive, and it doesn't serve you, right? And a lot of us deal with challenges this way. And this is why I encourage all of you to get really good at what I teach you, right? And then the next, the last one here is treat others with respect, no matter no matter who they are. This is very important for me. You know, um, I was in the military for six years, and and it was interesting because people who would have a certain level of rank in their chest, they they expected you to to respect them. And you know, according to the culture, military culture, yeah, you had to respect them. But the, I saw two different types of respect. I saw real respect and I saw fake respect, right? What what's what's fake respect? It's very simple. This person who has a certain rank, he's in your presence. And you show respect to him. And then the second he walks out of that door, you're just talking mad shit about him, right? There is no respect there. That is fake respect. What is real respect? In their presence, you respect them. And when they're not present, you still have that respect for them. That's real respect. Now, how do you gain that respect? That's the question. I always had that question. I was like, why do some soldiers respect and don't respect? And I was just... You know, that was just me always thinking, you know, but the way I understood is that the way you actually gain respect is by just being respectful. That's it. If you, if I was respectful, since I was respectful to everybody, everybody respected me. That it was that simple. It wasn't anything because you're better than the other people or any of this stuff it had nothing to do with that. It really just had to do with just giving, giving that respect back. The way you earn respect is just give respect right this is how that's how simple it was and for me it was really important in the military to have to have respect and to always be respectful no matter who it was i i wouldn't really say anything about anybody behind their back because i was just i just wanted to have that respect for people because if i was the type of person who'd be just talking shit about people behind their back then i give other people the right to do that to me right because whatever you put out into the universe is exactly what you get back so I'm always respectful to everybody. I don't care who you are. I'll show I'll show you respect. You're human. That's all that I need to know. If you're a human, then I respect you, right? Period. Even <clears throat> even if you're like a piece of piece of crap human, I'll still respect you because that's just how I I I want to be. <clears throat> that's how I want to live my life. So these are a couple of things that I do, right? So what some of them can have time limits. Some of them don't really need time limits. This is kind of how I want to live my day. And I kind of claim this, okay, pay calls to action, calls. If I review this daily and I'm paying attention, okay, calls to action, 
That means I'm paying attention to my negative emotions, right? Deal with negative emotions. <clears throat> if I say treat others with respect, no matter who they are, then I remember to respect people all the time. Always respect people, right? Pay attention to what I focus on. You have control. Then I remind you myself, okay, I control my thoughts, my emotions, and my actions. I'm in control here. So I'm claiming these things, okay? So put, put a couple of things here, a couple of actions <clears throat> or an action plan that you can do daily, weekly, whatever. Some time limits, some not. Get creative with this, you know? I know it's kind of different. Like, how do I really click? Just, just like I have it here, you know? Live, always live with love. Always be respectful to other people. Because if, if I take any of these actions down here, any of these actions, if I take any of these actions here, they link to at least one of these one of these I am statements up here, right? The say I am respectful. I, I know I have one that's respect. Here we go. I'm always presentable and respectful. Right? There it is. It's linked to it. You see that? Um, and there's a bunch of other emotions here that I want to that I want to experience that are linked to linked to these calls to action, to me, my action plans down here, right? So neg deal with negative emotions. I have control. So I'm focused, I'm concentrated. I have it up here, right? I know that's one of mine. I'm focused and I'm concentrated. Where are you guys? I'm focused and concentrated, right? I'm curious and interested. I always want to be learning new things. I'm motivated and inspired. I'm excited and enthusiastic. These are all emotions. I'm determined and committed. I'm persistent and consistent. One I need, need to add is I am disciplined. Right? I am disciplined. This is another very powerful one. My newer one, I have it. I am disciplined. It's a good one. Very powerful. To show discipline, to have discipline, to wake up early every morning, it takes discipline. To exercise, you know, three or four days out of the week takes discipline. To eat healthy takes discipline. To make your phone calls make, takes discipline. To work your business takes discipline. Everything you do that you want to create in your life that creates freedom for you, is requires discipline in order for you to execute. Okay. So discipline, discipline, discipline. That's a good one. I am discipline. All right. And there's so many great I am statements. If you go on YouTube, you look for I am, I am statements or I am videos or I am audios, you'll it'll, it'll come up with it. You can you can listen to it as you're driving. But so we have this. This is you, this is claiming who you are, who you want to be. And this is the, the best way to do it is with I am statements every time. And then clear, clarify why you want this, right? As this person, I can create the best life for myself and for my family. That's true, right? If you if you had all these qualities, you'd be you'd have a an amazing life because you'd be an amazing person. And every day you just live as an amazing person. And every day you'd have an amazing days <laughs> and then you'd have an amazing week, an amazing month, an amazing year. And then in, across a lifetime, you have an amazing life. And that's the, that's the whole point of this, people, okay? I want you guys to have an amazing life. You deserve it and you can create it. Most definitely you can create it because it's all within your power to do so. All right, so now let's talk about relationships. I know this is going to be fun for, for some of us relationships this be another area of your life again very important okay i mean damn like relationships and i'm going to state it right here relationships especially your intimate ones like with your boyfriend girlfriend uh, your significant other your spouse right husband wife that can bring you the most joy in your life some of the greatest joy that i receive in, in this in in my life comes from my marriage right but at the same time, on the flip side, that you can you can experience so much pain from relationships if it's if it's unstable, you know. And I've been there too. I know how that feels. I think we all kind of all kind of do, right? So, how to how to avoid painful relationships and how to support loving and and pleasurable relationships, right? Well, I think one thing you really need to do is clarify what you really want in that relationship. How do you really want that relationship to be, right? That's one thing. And then the communication with the other person and communicating what you both want in the relationship and what you both can bring to the table to help make that relationship at the level that you guys want it to be is really important, 
Okay. Now you can't control what other people do. You can only really control what you do. So always start with yourself, right? I know I get it. I've been in, I've been in this position. I'm guilty of this as well. Oh, it's not me. It's her. You know, it's not my fault. It's their fault. <laughs> I know how it is. It is them. It's them doing it. Don't like, that's a big thing. It's a big no. Don't get into that. Right. Just improve yourself. You know, you'll notice if you improve yourself and you just become an example to that, to your partner of like what you're striving to become, many times they'll follow suit. Okay. They'll come around eventually. All right. Um, I haven't had a perfect marriage with Federal. We've been together for 15 years, 15 years, December 4th. And just to kind of clarify, we didn't get married December 4th. We met each other December 4th. And that's what we celebrate. We got married to the court in Norwalk, California, like in March 13, 17. I don't know. It's one of those days. It's the 13 or the 17. But we don't celebrate that day. We celebrate the day we've met. That's what we celebrate. And really, that's, and when we say we've been together for 15 years, we've probably been married for legally, I don't even know, maybe like, uh, 12 years <laughs> that's good to put out there but that again that never mattered because the second we were together they were it was like dude we're going to be together that's it this is us this is we're going to be that's we just knew right i was ready for her she was ready for me i i spent months before creating the person that i want to be that i want to be with in uh, in my mind and then i met fedra and she was doing the same things so you guys know and just to let you know these are these are some of the qualities that I wanted in my in the woman that I was going to be with. One, I wanted her to speak Spanish. I wanted her to have, have a cute accent. When I first met Fedra, her ex, her accent was thick. You know, it's she's way better now with her English than when I first met her. It was like I, I couldn't understand what she was saying sometimes. That's how thick it was. But I thought it was cute, right? I wanted that. I wanted her to like my mom. I want my mom to like her as well. I wanted her to have like this white, paley skin. This is just what I kind of like wanted in her like feature wise and um i those were like a couple of traits that i really wanted that were just kind of like distinguished obviously i wanted to be beautiful and, and and smart and all these other qualities that everybody wants right but those four qualities there that were very specific by the way very specific that you had you know and i i i visualized that and i was creating that before i even met her and i attracted that into my life right and she can say the same thing as well and so by the time we got together, it was amazing. It was beautiful and all that stuff. And then all the challenges started. It's like, oh, it got hard. You know, there were, she had health challenges, like with cancer and everything. There was other challenges that we had financially speaking, right? We've gone through a lot within the first just couple of years of our, our, us being together. We probably experienced as many challenges as a marriage does in the first 10 years, and it was it was good for us. I didn't understand why it was happening then, but now I do understand. Because her and I wanted to have a beautiful, amazing marriage. We didn't understand that in order to have that, you have to go through fucking hell together, you know? So you go through hell together, and you get to the other side, and there's your beautiful marriage. But most people quit the second it gets hard. Nope, I'm out. This is it's, it shouldn't be this way. A marriage should always be perfect and beautiful and fluffy and and a honeymoon stage. That's not how it works, people. I'm just just I'm going to be honest with you. All right. You want to have a beautiful, great marriage, then expect to go through hell with that person. And as long as you can stay committed and persevere and get through it together on the other side, there's your beautiful marriage waiting for you because you both have to develop into the type of person the husband and the wife that knows how to work together, balance your energies and, and work as a team. And it's not an easy thing to do. It's one of the most challenging things to do. I believe so, because we're not really taught how to have a, a, a healthy marriage. I didn't have the example. My parents were divorced by the time I was 14 years old. And prior to that, my parents did not have a good marriage. Trust me. I did not like my dad. Uh, most of us kind of grew up hating our father um, I had a fear of becoming like my dad for the longest time, and I did not have an example. My oldest brother has been divorced once. My oldest sister has been divorced. My old, my other older brother, he's divorced. Um, my sister and her, my other sister and her husband, 
she's thinking about divorcing him. <laughs> I was like, holy crap. I have a little brother who's um who hasn't had a girlfriend for I don't know how long. Um and so and he's just a year younger than me. And so I I don't have these examples in my family of a healthy marriage. I just I don't. I never did. But I always knew I wanted to have one, you know? I just I knew that I I, I wanted to, I didn't want to be in a marriage where I was going to be divorced later on. I was in pretty much almost engaged with a girl for for a while before we ended up breaking up. And the reason I broke up with her is because every time I saw my future with her, I didn't see myself happy and it freaked me out. I didn't was, I was, I was scared. I was like, no, 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 I'm not going to go into this. If I'm not going to be happy, I'm not going to waste my time and her time. And then maybe even have children and have to go through a divorce because I'm unhappy. It, I was not going to put myself in that position. Okay. You have to really make it clear to yourself what it is that you want. And throughout my years, I didn't know, but through experience, I was just kind of figuring out things, what I want, what I, what are, what qualities do I really want in a woman and all this stuff and what tool do I need to become in order to be a good, a good partner. And there was just so much that went through my head when I was young. Right. And I met Fedra right when I was like about 25, 26 years old, she was about 21. And so once we met each other, we were both ready, but man, I did not know it was going to be as hard as, as it was. So her and I didn't really start like getting ourselves on the same page until roughly about eight years into our relationship. Eight years it took, okay? And I remember, and I shared this with you guys, and I've shared it before. And I remember that day. I remember when it started shifting because it was so significant to me. Because prior, at, at one point, Fedra was very much being manipulated by her mom where she was giving her all our money. She would even pull out credit cards for her and they would max out and we would have to pay these things. Like that's how bad it was. And it was putting a lot of financial stress on me. And I would express this to her like, dude, come on, stop, be on, be on my side. I need you on my side. Like we're, we're, you're married to me. You're not married to your mom, but, but she's my mom, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, holy crap, bro. Come on. This it, trust me. It was very frustrating. And I remember at one point I expressed this to her because I expressed this to her many times. And I remember the last time I did, um, again, I felt like it was just going in one year one and out the other. And I wasn't getting anything across to this person. And I remember feeling so hopeless. I mean, like hopeless. This was when we were still in Alaska. And I remember looking out the window. I remember it was dark out. It was winter. I remember the snow. I remember the whiteness of the snow and I just felt hopeless. And I just, I stood there in my office and I was like, what do I do? And I remember when you ask yourself questions, especially when you're very sincere, you're going to receive an answer. That answer comes internally. And that answer is like, it's just boom in your face. When I asked that question, the answer I received was, just keep going. That was it. And it was interesting because when you receive the answer, you feel so much, so much hope. And like it, it just the, the hopelessness that I felt was gone instantaneously when I heard the answer. It's just just keep going. And I was okay. I'll keep going. And I I wasn't gonna leave. I'm like we we're in the middle of Alaska. It was like negative 20 outside. It's where the hell would I go? I wouldn't go anywhere, you know? My car? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> no, nah, that wouldn't. So, and what's interesting, either the next day or a couple of days later, she comes up to me and she says that she needs to change. Just keep going, okay? You can have it. It's hard. So, Make clear what you want. Let's start with this. Relationships are essential to our existence. We are all dependent on others to ensure our survival. A baby depends fully on its parents in order to survive. In cities we live in, we depend on the work done by the thousands of people who maintain the infrastructure of that city. We depend on farmers to grow and gather our food. We're dependent on people all the time. Okay, we our survival requires us to work together in order to survive. Okay, 
In this section, the relationships are referred to are relationships that are the most important to us, such as your close immediate family and maybe your close friends. Your friendships must be those that you see with a lasting future, all right? It shouldn't just be any, any person with your friendships. If you have friendships you know that are really worth anything, those aren't the friendships I'm referring to, okay? What do these people mean to you? What type of growth do you want to have with these people? Now, your spouse and your children will definitely be with whom you uh, be people with whom you must have goals. You should have goals for your spouse. You should have goals for your for your children. How you want to be with them? How you want to act with them? How what what type of things you want to do with them? What type of relationships and intimacy and and, and connections you want to have with these people? What type of spouse do you want to be? What type of parent do you want to be? Okay, very important. At the very least, your spouse. And your kids, most they, they should be the most important people in your life. If your friend is more important than your spouse and your kids, that's kind of messed up. I'm just gonna say, like you should, you should, you're probably not a good person. <laughs> your kids should be like number one, right? And your spouse should be there with you, right? That's how it should be. Again, if you're putting like, oh, my mom is number one, my sister is number one, and then it's my husband and my kids, that you should you have to change, you have to reprioritize that shit because it doesn't work, okay? You can't put your children and your spouse second to everybody else, right? Because it causes problems. So here's the question. What do I desire to have with my relationships and with whom in 2024? So let's just focus on 2024. What do you want to, where do you want to get it to in 2024? Focus my thoughts on my, on my important relationships and the pleasure, pleasure they bring me. So make clear here, you know, now I, I don't really have, my example up here, um, but here's a couple of things you can add in here, right? I think one thing, especially say, for instance, say let's talk about your spouse, right? Or say you're a boyfriend, girlfriend, someone who's really important to you that you have an intimate relationship with. I think one big thing here is clarifying, hey, you know, we need to, we need to spend at least one day out of the week, maybe for an hour or two where we're together, where we're talking well, we're, we're spending time together, you know? I think what happens in our busy lifetime, we don't get to spend time with our family. You know, we're working, 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 working. And when you do spend time, you go, what are you guys doing? You're probably eating and you're probably watching TV. That's not really intimate time together. I mean, like, are you having conversations with them, right? Do you know what's going on with their lives? What are they doing? You know, what are you doing? What goals do you have together, you know? Are you talking about what you guys want to create together? Where do you want to live in the future? Do you want to continue to live in Colorado Springs? Do you want a bigger house? Do you want, you know, more things? Do you want to make more money? Do you do you want to travel the world? You know, because you're going to be doing this together. It's not like, you know, I want to travel the world. And if my spouse goes, cool. You know, if she doesn't go, I don't care. It doesn't matter. You know, no, that's not how it works. Anywhere I go, I'm taking my family with me. And so any goals that I have for my future, it has to be aligned with, my, with, with you know, what, what we both want for each other or for our marriage and for our family. Are you having those conversations at least once a week? To, um, I'm not sure if you know who Jordan Peterson is, but he says he, a, a husband and a wife need to be conversing at least 90 minutes. He, and he just puts a time limit at least 90 minutes every week about their marriage, about what they're about, where they are, about what they want, about the things they did during the week that really that was really great. And the things that, you know, that they can improve on. You, you guys are a team. You guys, you guys, it's not just you doing your thing and then that person doing their thing. And every now and then you kind of hang out. No, that's not a marriage. Okay. A marriage or an intimate relationship is like, Hey, are, are, our goals aligned? You know, do we have these conversations together? Are we talking about these things? Communication, right? I think the other thing is how a good question to answer here and to put here, how can you become a better, a better spouse or a better person in your relationship? How can you, how can you, how can you serve more in the relationship, right? Maybe you already do everything. <laughs> I don't know. But maybe you maybe you know you can do more. And then maybe that's a conversation you can have with them. Hey, you know, I know we both do a lot in this relationship in our in our marriage. What can I do more? You know, what can what can I help you with? Right? Well, how can I be more of a service to you? Always think about them first. Always think about service. If you if you if you're coming from a, a a position of selfishness where it's just me, 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 that it's, it, you're not going to have a, 
a very prosperous marriage or relationship because you just focus on yourself. But a, a relationship isn't just about you. It's about both of you. And you notice the more you serve, the more they're going to want to serve you. And it's a beautiful exchange of this love and support that goes on. And that's exactly what a relationship is. This relationship is this, this give and take, give and take. You're giving and they're giving back. And they're, as you give, they take. And as they give to you, you take. And it's this back and forth. And it's a very beautiful exchange of support and love that goes be, between the two people. Okay? If you can, if you can really master that, you can have a, an amazing marriage, you know, and you're both are very happy and satisfied with the marriage. Now, one thing about men and women, men and women are very different. You know, I know there's a lot of discussion about how men and women are equal. Like in reality, we're not because what men need in a relationship is very different than what women need. You know, like I, like I tell Fedra, she's beautiful all the time, Right. But I need to say that to her like all the time in order for her to, to know that she's beautiful. Like I can't just say, okay, babe, I told you last week you're beautiful. So come on, leave me alone. It's like, no, it's like women need that for affirmation all the time. Like, like I, you're beautiful. I love you. Like they need to feel because I don't know about women, but they forget what you do. You know, I'm like, did you, don't you remember? I bought you flowers just the other day. And now you're upset because I don't ever get you stuff. Like, what are you talking about? Like, cause that's how women are. It's just, I, I've been with Edric for a long time. It's like, it's so confusing for a man. Like I'm confused like 50% of the time with this person, right? But it's it's just funny for me. This is more funny. I'm like, well, what are you talking about? Fedra? like, what do you, I just, <laughs> anyways. So because men are more logical, right? It's interesting because um, men really receive like compliments. And I remember um, seeing this podcast, listening to this podcast about this guy. And it's like, it's like, dude, like, what's interesting about men is like, we remember, like, I remember years ago, this woman said that, hey, you have really nice hands. And you know something up until this, to this moment of my life, I still remember that compliment from that person, because men rarely receive compliments. But when we do, we're like, wow, thank you. Like, we're, we're so appreciative of it. But women receive compliments all the time. And I can see it. I have a niece, Fedra's uh, sister has, has a daughter. And you're so beautiful. You're so cute all the time, you know, all the time. And she's, she's this little girl. She's so feminine. You know, she's, she's, her emotions are up and down all the time. It's so funny to see her. And she's, she's, she's adorable. Right. And I'm like, and then with Bryson, he's right there playing. They don't, they're not always complimenting Bryson because boys, you know, boys, boys are different than girls. And when I remember this one time, Fedra, no, Bryson was like, Bryson and Fedra and her were watching television and and Fedra was like, saw this girl on, on television. Oh, she's so beautiful. And then Bryson told my told Fedra, was like, oh, mommy, but you're beautiful too. And in Kennedy, which is the niece, she's right there and she's listening. And she looks at them and she's like, fine. And she walks away because she didn't, they didn't say that she was beautiful too. And it was just so hilarious. It was just the cutest thing because she's this little four-year-old girl, you know? And that's what I'm talking about. That's the difference between boys and girls. Like women need this, this confirmation. Hey, I love you. I, I care for you. You're beautiful all the time. And with men, like we need it every now and then, of course, but we rather, our love for us is more like respect. Hey, just respect me. You know, that's love for me. Love for women is more of affectionate love and love for men is more, hey, more respectful love, right? Don't just don't disrespect me. I'm never I res, I'm very respectful to her. She doesn't disrespect me, which is that's all I really asked for, you know. And so understand that you're very different. What do you need, you know, in the marriage from him or from her? And what is what it, what do they need from you to clarify that? You know, these are good conversations to have and put these things down. Now, say, for instance, you're not in a serious relationship right now, but you want to be in a serious relationship. Great. Awesome. What, how do you, how does that look for you? I remember there was this little exercise that I did with uh, Tony Robbins in one of his programs. It's like, Hey, if you're not in a relationship, what's the ideal relationship for you? All right. And who do you need to become in order to have that ideal relationship? And what do they need to bring to the table in order to have that ideal relationship? You can kind of clarify these things right here. What do you want? You know, 
obviously there's a relationships you already have, maybe friends, family, uh, you know, that are close to you again. But, you know, maybe these are also relationships you want to establish sometime in the future. I remember doing this exercise and like two, three months later, because I was very consistent with it, like reviewing it, I, I attracted Fedra into my life, you know. And prior to that, I was I was dating different girls um, here and there. I was meeting girls and everything. But, you know, it was very different, the experience that I had with Fedra, you know, because these girls, it wasn't like, boom, that I knew. It was I dated them like, yeah, I liked them, but you know, there's something that's missing, you know, and whatever it was, I don't know if it just couldn't really identify, but it just wasn't that that attraction there. When, if, when you do this exercise and you kind of clarify what you want in a relationship, whether it's a relationship you have now or a relationship you want to create in the future. What's interesting is that when you come up, when you find this person, if you're, you know, currently a single and when you find this person, you just know. It isn't like, I'll know in five years from now. Nope. You just know. It's just, boom, it clicks. You know, I still remember when I first met Fedra and that, that whole experience and what it looked like. It, I played over and over in my head because for me, it was just one of the greatest days of my life. And so, and we talk about it every now and then, you know, that day, how, how it looked and how it was. Because it was a, it was just a fun day for us. You know, it was just us meeting each other, us hanging out, us going on a date. And so it was that for me, that's, that's how I kind of see it for other people too. You'll, you'll know, especially when you really clarify what it is that you want in that relationship. Okay. The qualities that you want in that person and the qualities that you don't want in that person. For me, an example was I didn't want them to be a smoker. I didn't like, I didn't smoke and I didn't want them to be a smoker. I didn't want them to be, have any addictions like alcohol or drugs or anything like that. So those are a couple of things I really didn't want. And I, I, I did not want them to be a jealous person. You know, that shit's annoying as hell, bro. That shit's so stupid. You know, jealous, like, oh, because my ex-girlfriend was. And I was like, and Fedra's ex-boyfriend was very jealous too. And she didn't want that in a relationship, relationship as well. And so it was just interesting how we kind of like met each other and we kind of had some values aligned already. So again, make it very clear to yourself. The next part is why? Why is this important to you, right? Reason, why do I want this level of relationship with these people? You know, again, an another big one here will be for your kids. So establish that. What type of parent do you want to be? Like um, if, you, if you, for instance, I, I take one day out of the week or uh, half that day I'm hanging out with just me. It's just me and Bryson yesterday. That was yesterday. It's Tuesdays. And from like four to like, like 10 PM, we we're just hanging out, doing stuff and eating. And we went, went out to eat food. We went to the arcade together. We just had, you know, fun. And he looks forward to that. They love it. You know, children. They want to be best friends with you. They really do. They love you so much. And it's crazy how, how, how much they love you. Because as adults, we forget that, you know, that pure love that you have when you're a child. Because our mind becomes programmed by all these other things. So you can you have so much influence on your children. And I know you love your children. I know all of you do, you know. And I know some of you have some great relationships with your children, you know, have some goals with them. You know, what do you want to kind of do with them? What do you want to teach them? I think that's all beautiful stuff and great things. What type of parent do you want to be? What type of example do you want to be to your, to your kids? And then put it the reason why, right? I want to have a great marriage because it, it, for me, that's where my source of love and happiness comes from. You know, I know it comes from other things as well, but my gosh, you know, if I have it once, my, when Fedra and I are aligned, it's amazing. And then I want to be a great father to my son because I really want to, need, I need to be the example of what a man is, to, what a great man is to my son. So he becomes that great man because I need, I know that he's going to do as I do as opposed to do as I say, right? So these are a couple of things, a couple of reasons why. Um, and so make, make the why compelling. You want this to stimulate emotion inside of you. And then the actions you can take, what actions can I take to create this level of relationships, right? What actions can I take? And so, for instance, like I said, spend at least 90 minutes a week with my spouse. Commit uh, a day out of the week where I'm spending time with my children, where it's just us hanging out, or a family day where we all go out, hang out, and have fun, you know? Um, if you want to, every night before, I I, I love putting my, my kids to sleep, and I put them to sleep, and I tuck them in, and I pray with them. If that's something you want to do with them, great. And if you want to, every night, pray as a family, great. 
before, before when we go out to eat, we as a family, uh, we make sure to pray together. So you can put the, pray together every time before having dinner, right? I think that's great as well. It's just what creates connection between the family? What creates connection between you and your significant other? What creates connection between you and your children? If there's people outside of that, like, you know, really good friends, think, okay, great. What type of goals and, and what type of goals do you have to establish with those people as well, right? Whoever they may be. And then if you're single, okay, what type of, what can you be doing to find that that amazing person, right? Who do you need? Like, who you, do you need to become? Or where, where can you go to find these people? I'm going to tell you something right now. You're not going to find your significant other at the club or at the bar, okay? You're not, most likely you're not going to. They're probably somewhere else, okay? Because people who go to the club and go to the bar and every weekend they're partying. And, and I don't think any of you guys do this personally, but I'm just saying, oh yeah, I met my boyfriend at the at this club. Uh, we were so drunk. And like, like, okay, it's, it already sounds like a divorce ready to happen. That's to me. But anyways, <laughs> but that's, that's, that's a couple of things you could do here. Um, here's a power quote. Relationships can bring the greatest pleasure in our lives, but they can also bring the greatest pain. Never ignore your important relationships. You must always nourish them with love and attention. Give appreciation for those people because one day, either they or you will be gone. We all die one day. Okay, and hopefully we get all get to live a long, healthy life. But you just never know when they'll be gone. So appreciate them when when they're when they're now when they're alive, because hey, life changes very quickly, and death is just something we're all going to experience. Here's a, another quote. Here I forgot to to read this quote, the power quote for the for your personality and character. Claim who you are. Feel the person you want to become. Every day, claim these traits and qualities. You can always become more than what you already are. Always strive to be the best expression of yourself. Okay? Always strive to be better. We're designed to do this. It's about 927 now. Let me go ahead and stop sharing. All right. Any any questions? Any comments? Anything anybody wants to add to, to these areas that I, I, we've been talking about? Yeah, um, as far as the relationships, do you have any advice of how I can get my wife to let me have a girlfriend? It, here's here's the best advice. Make your wife your girlfriend again. Because <laughs> <laughs> when, you, when you treat her like a girlfriend, like remember when you were dating and you're like, you know, go out, plan stuff and everything? That's that's That was like probably... <laughs> That was fun, you know, and and they they like that when you plan. Hey, babe, right tom tomorrow, just be, you know, or this Friday, in the evening, I got plans. Just don't make any plans. We're gonna be going out, and she'd be like, "What? Um, I'm not gonna tell you. We're just gonna go and just just have fun, you know." And they women love that. They really do, you know. And when you treat her like a girlfriend, because sometimes treating them like a wife is like something like. You know, you kind of forget the, the how, how it was when you were a boyfriend and girlfriend and how fun it was going out, meeting she, each other. She just gave me a black eye. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't blame her. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> no, but I mean, hey, yeah, hey, it is. That's that's true, though. You know, that's why I said, like, at least once a week, do something just you get you to, you know, uh, I I think it's a lot of fun. Go out, have some dinner, have some fun, go to a show. Um, I mean, you guys live up in Denver. Denver has a lot of things to do. They have tons of shows out there. It's Christmas time. And they have a lot of really, really cool shows. On I mean, on Thursday we're gonna see the Fab Four. I'm not sure if you guys know who the Fab Four are, but they're they're a Beatles cover band. Um, and they're here in the Springs, and so I got tickets for for us to go to go there. And so, if you like the Beatles, you know, and they're they're actually quite cheap. They weren't that expensive. And you know what's what's cool is that my office is right here, right across the park. The parking lot is the theater where we're going to be going to watch it. So, <laughs> and that's here in the springs. But um, any any other questions or comments? Nope, all good as usual. Thank you. Cool, cool, perfect. Um, let me see here. That's everything so far. Tomorrow we'll be covering um spirituality i haven't sent out sent out that one yet 
but we'll, we'll be covering that. I'll send that later on today. But yeah, we'll be covering spirituality. It'll be the whole time. That's the, the full hour is just on that. It's a big one. I'm going to be covering a lot of things, information that I kind of feel well, that I believe in my about about this reality and about life and everything. But um, uh, so we'll see how that goes. It should be a lot of fun. It's a lot of stuff that I've already talked about, like chakras and energy and, and your aura. But I'm going to go even further, like even kind of deeper, even kind of into like physics about energy and light and uh, how all that is kind of a part of our reality. And hopefully it isn't too abstract where it kind of goes over your head. Hopefully it kind of it makes sense to you. I've been I've been kind of like preparing for this for this uh, um, for this presentation in my mind for the past couple of weeks. Like, what am I going to be talking about? How do I want to present this? Do I really want to talk about that information because it's kind of like really abstract or a lot deeper than, you know, than the, than maybe most of us can really process now the way we are. But I think a lot of you are ready for this information. So I really want to cover it with you guys and have fun with it. But um, any other questions or comments before I let you guys go? No, thank you. Yeah, you guys are very good. Yeah, it's another yeah, day. Thank you. You guys man. need anything? You guys need anything? I'm available. Let me know if you guys need anything at all. You guys have an awesome day. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you, Rick. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great, have a good day, guys.